back again. Uh, today we're going to discuss the uh, Old Hickory line and compare it to the, uh, the Russell Green River line. Uh, these are two historic lines and I'm going to give a little bit of history here. Uh, this particular pattern, the butcher pattern, came about, it's been around for a very long time. History isn't exactly clear where it came from, but one of the first producers of it was the Green River Works there in Massachusetts and the John Russell Company. And that came about in uh, 1834, just in time for the Western Migration. And this particular pattern was very popular at that time because, first off, if you were living on the frontier, you didn't have a lot of discretionary cash. And or if you were heading west in a covered wagon, you didn't have room for a lot of specialized cutlery. And so somebody either got lucky or got right, got it right. This is a, a Russell pattern, just for a look at it. They had plenty of length of blade, and so you could chop veggies or break a carcass down into primal cuts. And also it had a, a sweep here that you could skin with. And this made a difference if you didn't have a lot of money, because you could use one knife to do an awful lot of things. And at that, in that time period, there was not a lot of stuff that was prefabricated. So um, it makes a, a very useful pattern on the frontier. So the primary difference between the Russell line and the, um, the old Hickory line is the old Hickory line came out in 1934, um, pardon me, 19, 1927. And they very, look very much alike. They come with a hardwood handle. But uh, one of the downsides with the uh, old Hickory line is that this particular one that I got for a rip roaring 12 bucks, the price is great, but uh, the handle was loose, but the more we used it a little bit, the, uh, the wood expanded, came around the, the rivets, held real well now, and basically you can't keep beat the price. And we have another example here that's 10 years old, and we'll talk about it some more. They are, you know, strictly a, a carbon steel, and they, um, they do corrode, but if you keep them dry, it should not be a problem. Anyway, the original Russell line comes in a couple lengths. This is the original Russell. Uh, this one's about 20 years old. Uh, you can see that the, the, the copper is bleeding out of the, uh, the brass into the wood. And this is, this is in its factory form. You can get these blades in blanks, the Russell blanks, you can get them. And the present company, the Dexter company, is now making a modern version of this with the ejection molded handle. And Dexter is the parent company now to the Russell company so you can get all of what you see right now. Uh, you can buy the, the antler or you can buy the wood and so you can make with the Russell line you can make stuff from scratch there aren't kits available through the old Hickory line. One primary difference between the two is that they use three rivets on the Russell and on the old Hickory they only use two but that's you know whether you want to fight over that or not. One thing about both these lines is that the handles are big enough to where you can shape them. So in this knife here, uh, I've had it for quite a while, and I've just kind of whittled it down, shaped it to where it fits real well. And so I'm going to be eventually doing that with this one. And uh, I just left it as is for the, uh, the sake of this demonstration. But one of the other primary thing, as you'll notice here, is the, the Russells are flat. They're, they're flat ground, and they're, they're roughly the same thickness but there's a huge difference in the way they are ground. The Old Hickory comes with a really spiffy looking striations on it, so it kind of has a down-home frontier feel, blacksmith shop coming for it, but the bevel starts way down the blade and it's very abrupt. To get this to a usable edge, I had to do a lot of scraping on a uh, Norton coarse stone to get it down to where it would, that, that's the stone that's in the Norton Horning Cradle, to get it down to where it had a decent bevel because it's very abrupt. But both these lines respond real well to a soft hard Arkansas. Once you get it down there, they take a screaming edge. But the difference is with the way these are beveled is there's a lot of drag on, in certain uh, applications. Now if you're out, you know, whittling a, a tent stake or something with this, if this is going to be your camp knife, it works okay for that. But in other production, like if you are slicing roasts, or you know, peeling a hide or something where you need a little less drag, that can be a problem. Now, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but on this older on, uh, old hickory line, there's a polished line right along the bevel right here. 
to where you can see the material has been polishing off the patina. So it, these will actually hit under certain circumstances. They they drag more. So, um, but they do with that thick, thicker bevel. It supports the edge. So you kind of have to to buy a uh, you know it's a buy off trade off as to what you're going to use the knife for. If you're going to be mistreating the edge, being rough with the edge, the uh, the old hickory may be a better choice. If you're going to use it for general purposes, like peel, like I said, peeling a hide, working in the kitchen, these both of these look great with your cast iron cookware or your enamel uh, campware. They do real well for that. If you want to fabricate a knife from scratch, do your own customization to it, you can knock go through the trouble of knocking the handle off of an old uh, old hickory. But it's easier if you get the rustle. They've got pre-drilled holes and you can put any kind of material on there you like. Also they both come in various various lengths uh, but the the Russell, uh, pardon me, the old hickory, they it comes in a couple variants that are longer than this and they're you know like 12 inch and so forth uh, for what they call uh, scimitars or steak knives where they, you would cut off a steak from a primal cut. So that's the thought there and so but one thing is I bring this up too on a breaking knife See here's a J.A. Hinkles, and it's about the same thickness as the Ontario, but here again, the Hinkles is much more tapered in the grain, and you can see right here again, the old hickory hangs up, and it's a little thicker. So if you're going to use some serious uh, you know, for industrial cutlery, or if you're, you know, breaking down an elk car uh, carcass to primal cuts, you may want to go with like the Hinkle. Secondly, here I was in cattle and horses for years, and we would dress out our own meat. And this one here I actually used on the ranch uh, as a hide peeler and it worked very well. As you can see it's got a little bit of uh, life wear and tear here. It worked out very well. I put this on here with some extra grip. So the Ontario knife worked well for that. Um, it's obviously not, these milder steels aren't going to hold an edge like a S30V or something like that, but they, you can't beat them for the buck. And then also, being a consummate knife collector, uh, this is the current Russell pattern, same one, I use this as well, but also it's got a thinner bevel on it here and only two uh, rivets, a little more ergonomics in the handle. And this, you can buy this knife through uh, different sources, Russell's still making them, Dexter, Russell. And this, this one on, from Ontario, uh, Old Hickory can also. So that's basically the difference between these two lines. Uh, that's how they work, and as I said, you can buy, a, buy them in any shape or form that you want. You can add handles to them or whatever, but they make a great uh, fashion statement to go with your mountain man, mountain man gear or whatever. At any rate, thank you for watching, and uh, please uh, subscribe uh, to the channel for future updates. Thank you.